So in this video, I'm going to show you my homemade camera light and stand. So this is what the finished product of my homemade LED camera light looks like. Um, it was made completely from scratch, you know, completely homemade, and it incorporates 225 white diffused LEDs um, into an adjustable wood frame. So as you can see with the light turned on, it is extremely, extremely bright. And with the light being diffused, it, you know, it shines all over the place. It isn't really necessarily all focused in one area. Um, and it really doesn't consume an awful lot of power. I run it off of a 12-volt uh, adapter, 12-volt DC adapter, which I have plugged into a watt meter here, uh, which shows that it's only using um, between 11 and 12 uh, watts right now. So, you know, quite, quite a low power consumption for such a bright light. So prior to working on this project, the only other main experience that I've had working with LEDs uh, was when I was building my custom uh, rear bicycle light for my main commuting bike and that incorporates uh, 16 red LEDs um, into the back of my milk crate here and uh, I've used some of the same design features that I learned when I was working on this project into my camera light. So the stand that I built for the light isn't really anything too fancy. Basically my only goal was to have uh, my light so it would be as flexible and adjustable um, as tri the tripod that I use for the majority of my filming. Uh, basically I wanted my light to be able to be as tall as the camera when it's you know on the top of my tripod and it's fully extended um, but also be um, as low to the ground as the tripod is when it's fully collapsed. Um, because I often end up doing um, filming of, of small kind of stuff on the ground when I do bicycle maintenance videos. So basically the way that this design works is I've got these square wooden tubes that I've built uh, which are telescopic. So basically I can lift this up and set it at any height that I want, you know, just by adjusting the height of these different tubes. And I've all, it's, it's very simple. All I have are these uh, little pins that I've built. Uh, which are used for holding it at the desired height you want. So let's say you want to move it up from here by about 30 centimeters. I just pull this bottom pin out and lift it up, uh, say to about there. Just push the pin through, and now I've got my light at this height here. Or if I want to move it higher, then I just pull this out. And to get it to the fullest height, I just put it here at the very bottom here. I've got a little marker here saying it's the end, so I know that it stops there. And then if I want to go even higher, then I just use this next set of holes and I can lift it all the way up to right here where that's the end of that and the light's even taller than I am. The base is just made from a scrap piece of plywood that I have and all it's held on there with um, are these four drywall screws in the bottom. The pins that I use for the height mechanism are actually made out of a broken spoke. Um, I just basically took the spoke and I cut it to the right length and then I had this little a uh, piece of dowel here and I drilled a hole in it that was um, you know quite a bit undersized and I squeezed some glue in there and then I just wedged uh, this spoke inside of there and then it worked very well and it's very easy to take this in and out. Um, of course I drilled the hole this, that this goes into um, significantly larger um, than it needs to be just to make it easy for it to come in and out at various different positions. So also in terms of adjustability, I also have the option to tilt uh, the lighting panel to different angles. So I've just got these knobs on the side here and if I loosen them, then I'm able to pivot this uh, very nicely on this point, which would allow me, um, if I wanted to shine my light down on something, I could just you know, lift the pole up to its very highest point and then I could just tilt this down and lock it in place and then I've got a light source that's coming from above. And then I've also got the same ability for rotating the light, so I've got this knob here which comes loose and then I'm able to pivot this in any direction here and of course lock it in that position with this knob. So when I was building this I made sure that there was lots of extra space in between the different sections um, of my telescoping uh, square piping here. Um, the reason I did that was because I wanted it to move uh, very smoothly and easily um, when, you know, when you're lifting it up and down. Um, and I was a little bit concerned that over time uh, the wood may warp a little bit and make it you know, a little bit more difficult for it to move up and down. Um, however, I left lots of space in there um, so that it would be able to still work even if it does uh, warp a small amount. However, the one disadvantage of having all that extra space in there is that when I lift it up, particularly to the higher spots, 
like right here, the light starts to become kind of wobbly. And when I extend to the very highest point, it's actually quite wobbly. You can see it moves you know, quite a bit in each direction. If I had built this stand for mounting a camera on the top of it, then this wobbliness would be a very significant problem because of course you know, you'd mount your camera there and you'd want to have your camera stationary, but it wouldn't stay stationary. It would, you know, you'd bump into it and all of a sudden your shot would be completely different or you'd be filming something and you know, it would be rocking a little bit or moving around and you just wouldn't get a stationary camera angle the way that you wanted to. Um, however, since I'm just using this um, for lighting, the fact that my lighting moves around a little bit really isn't a too, too big of an issue as far as I'm concerned, especially since this is diffused light. You know, it's, it's basically projecting light in all directions. Um, it really doesn't matter if this thing moves, you know, a few degrees in one direction or the other. That being said, there still are definitely better designs you could use uh, for building a stand for a light like this one. I also designed this so that inside of the light would still be somewhat serviceable. Uh, so for example, if one of the LEDs stopped working and I wanted to replace it, I'm still able to access the inside here. I've just got these two screws which I can take off. So I'll demonstrate that. They're just drywall screws. And then with those loosened off, this piece just pulls right off. And then you can kind of see inside there a little bit, but this panel here actually pulls right off. And then you can actually see all the solder joints which are inside of there. So as I mentioned earlier, there are 225 LEDs in here, so it's a 15 by 15 matrix. And having 225 LEDs means that I needed to do um, over 450 soldering joints, which actually took uh, quite a bit of time. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail right now about um, the actual circuit design that I used here, uh, but to summarize it very quickly, each one of these LEDs creates a voltage drop of about uh, three volts. So if you were to combine um, three of them in se or four of them in series, uh, three times four is 12, uh, which creates the 12 volts that my um, 12 volt AC adapter uh, creates. Um, however, I, I wanted to get obviously more than four, so what I've done is I've created four uh, parallel circuits which I've combined in series uh, to, to create that 12 volt drop over those 225 LEDs. Of course, I have read a few places online that combining multiple LEDs um, in a parallel circuit isn't a great idea, or at least um, if you're going to do it, you have to make sure you do things a certain way. Um, however, I'm pretty sure I have done everything properly and safely. Um, even though I haven't incorporated any resistors in here, um, I'm, I'm quite confident that my design is safe. And so far, it's been working very um, effectively, and I haven't had any issues with it. So the matrix of LEDs has these two wires which are soldered to it, which are what feed it the power. Um, so it comes out to this cord here. And uh, the original design was to have one of these uh, um, AC jacks that I was just going to kind of mount inside of the wood here. Um, however, I wanted, to, I, I wanted to make sure I had lots of extra cords so I'd be able to, um, you know, have lots of versatility with where I put the light and not have to, you know, have an extension cord and all sorts of um, mess from that. Um, so what I've done is I've just added this cord to the end there. And um, all I did was I just took the jack that I was going to use inside of there and I just mounted it inside of this kind of little block of wood. Uh, basically just something I cobbled together. Um, I've actually ordered a proper jack which is you know kind of the kind that will go in line with this and just kind of be a little plastic thing on the end. Um, but in the meantime, uh, you know it doesn't look the best but so far it's been working pretty good. In building this project, I have been somewhat limited um, on what I could do based on what tools I have access to because the majority of this build was completed um, in my bachelor apartment in downtown Toronto. Uh, so living where I do, I don't really have a whole lot of space for having a whole bunch of tools. So I you know, had to kind of improvise in some areas uh, for building. Um, luckily, I was able to make um, a bunch of the original cuts uh, for building the stand um, as well as building the border uh, for around the light there um, on my parents table saw. Um, of course they live in a different city though um, so the majority of the build actually had to be created here in my apartment. I'm thankful to have had a power drill which I used quite a bit um, in the construction of this um, but my sawing setup I don't really have any power saws or anything. What I've got here is a really old hand saw 
and a wooden miter block, which I use for, for, for cutting things to the right length. Um, and then I also have a power sander, which I used uh, basically kind of as a plane. I used some very um, rough sandpaper. This is a 50 grit. Um, and I used that for sanding down the edges here to get the thickness so it would be right to fit inside there. And I also use it every time you make a cut with a handsaw, it leaves a pretty rough end. And it's good to have um, a power sander just to smooth it out after you're finished cutting. So as you can see, I have my light so it's stood up behind my tripod here. And I'm going to put my uh, camera on the tripod there and turn on the light and we'll do some lighting tests. So you may have noticed so far that the lighting in this video really hasn't been very good. You know, the picture's been kind of grainy and it's just not a very clear picture because there's not an adequate amount of lighting to properly illuminate, um, you know, what I've been filming. And, uh, you know, I do my best in this apartment to try and film as much as I can during the day because I've got, you know, a big window over there which brings in all sorts of really nice natural light into this space here which makes a really good um, setting for filming various different things. Um, however, it's not always possible uh, to film things during the day, particularly during the winter when it gets dark by about 5 p.m. or sometimes even earlier than that. Um, it's really not possible to use natural light inside a space like this to film stuff. So I'm filming this right now in the evening, so through my window there's no natural light coming through, um, but I do have pretty much every single light in my apartment turned on with the exception um, of that one back there, um, but there's still not an adequate amount of light for properly filming. Um, you know, for a person to come in here and walk around, of course, there's definitely adequate light for, you know, for being, it's actually quite a bright room. Um, but not bright enough for my camera. Um, my camera is actually um, a pretty good camera for picking up low lighting conditions, um, but still, there's, you really have to have an awful lot of light to get a really, really clear picture. So of course, that's where my LED light comes in. So as I showed, um, I have my light set up so it's right behind the camera right there, and I haven't turned it on yet. I have the cord for it right here in my hand, so I'm just going to turn it on now and demonstrate the difference between having you know every light on in my apartment to having that all that stuff on with the addition of my LED light. So I'll just turn it on now. So at first it looks you know extremely extremely bright. You know it, it really brightens up things quite a bit. You might even say it looks too bright. Um, something else you might notice is that I kind of look maybe a little bit pale because. Um, the kind of LEDs that I use are just regular standard white LEDs. They're not a warmer kind of an LED. You know, if you wanted a more natural kind of a, a light, you could get um, like what they call uh, warm LEDs instead of the kind that I used if you were building um, a light like mine. But even though it's not natural light, I still think it really does improve the video quite a bit and really does, you know, brighten up this whole space just by having the light there. To adjust the brightness, I can also tilt the light to a slightly different angle, uh, which will lessen it a little bit, so it's not you know, quite as extremely bright as it was before, but still definitely improves the picture quite a bit. So I also wanted to demonstrate how good of a job the light does at illuminating a space in the dark. Um, so I now have all the lights in my apartment turned off, and I'm now going to turn on the LED light as the only lighting source in the room. Uh, so when I first turn it on, of course, it's extremely bright for a second, but then the camera adjusts to it. And as you can see, it does a quite a good job of illuminating basically everything here. Um, when I was first testing this light, I was really impressed that I could just basically put the light at one end of the room and turn it on and I could still, you know, pretty much see just about everything in the room. And, you know, it does a really good job. There's a lot of brightness in those 225 LEDs. Of course, you may notice if I put my arm up here that you can see some shadowing which is behind me, and that's just because I only have one lighting source. Um, if I were to have, you know, two lights like that, I could put one over there and one over there, and then I'd be getting lighting from, from two different angles, and it should eliminate all of those shadows. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this little demonstration video of my uh, homemade LED camera light. Uh, I actually already have all of the materials collected uh, to build a second camera light. Uh, that's going to be identical to it and uh, I am planning on making a little video series showing the step-by-step -step, uh, procedure um, of how to build one the same so stay tuned to my channel if you're interested in building um, an LED camera light that's the same as mine or just if you're interested in seeing um, you know what goes into building something like that 
Um, I am going to try and focus the video a little bit more on the actual LED portion of the light uh, more than the actual stand. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching.